What's up guys, welcome back to channel, welcome back to another video, and in today's video we are back in my office, so I finally got the poster up, I just got a few little, you know, tags right there, and for those of you guys who didn't see the last video, they, pretty much this poster is going to be representing the builds that we're going to be trying to accomplish in 2022 to reach our goal of an Audi R8 by the end of this year, that is the goal, now if it's a really ugly one or if it's a very mint one, um, that's, that's for fate to decide, but in the meantime, we're going to try to do our absolute absolute best to get up to the budget to buy one of these cash by the end of 2022. So if you guys are excited for that journey, make sure to smash the like button, make sure to subscribe to the channel because that is the goal of 2022. And if I cannot accomplish that, um, uh, I'll let you guys decide what happened. But yeah, guys, for the title of the video, we have an E92 M3 competition package that we picked up for an absolute steal of a deal. Now, I am so excited to work on this car. Now, from what I know, it had issues before the accident, and then uh, right now, it actually has a lot of damage. I know the damage doesn't look a lot from the naked eye, but once you get up beneath there, um, there's a lot of things broken. Another thing I'm also kind of worried about is maybe the subframe also got damaged just because of how bad the wheel got pushed in there. I'm assuming maybe something with a subframe Frame got bent, so we're gonna have to replace the subframe, which is a huge labor intensive job. And I'm also hoping nothing in the bottom of the undercage is also damaged. So, we're gonna be heading to the garage right now, my own garage for the first time. I'm super stoked. For those of you guys who are new to the channel, this is my first ever garage that I'm pretty much able to work from, so I'm super stoked for it. It's the first day I can actually get up in the morning and just go work in my own garage. I'm just so, so, so blessed. I haven't done this in a very long time, and uh, yeah, I'm just super excited to do that. So, yeah, let's go ahead, dissect the E92 M3, and hopefully, hopefully, um, it's not as bad as I think it is because I got it for a good deal so I'm, I'm assuming something should be wrong you know hey baby <laughs> you ready to fix an E92 M3 I know I am I know I am You're so cute Guys, something I've been meaning to do in this garage, it came with one LED bar. Other than that, there's no other lights in this garage. It is kind of cold right now, and I cannot wait to either get a heater in this garage or get a bunch of LED lights in here and close this garage so then I can actually work, um, and it's going to be a lot warmer, or at least that, you know, we have some proper lighting in here. Super stoked for that. Hopefully, that's going to be in the near future. I'm ordering the lights pretty soon. I'm trying to figure out what is the best looking lights for a garage. If you guys know, make sure to let me know down below if you guys have done some kind of custom um, garage layout. Actually, make sure to tag me on Instagram or like, like send it to me through DMs or whatever because I'm really, really, really curious. I want to do this right in this garage. I think it's going to look super, super, super sick. But yeah, guys, we have the E92 M3 competition package right here, guys. And this is the extent of the damage. Now, I'm super happy it didn't knock out our oil cooler. We don't have any visually leaking parts in this car, which is a huge, huge, huge good sign. As you guys can see with that control arm, that control arm, we actually had to knock it off to move the wheel off from the pretty much the back of the car. We couldn't get this thing off the trailer. It was super hard to get it off the trailer. Um, so we much how to knock off that control arm that being said this wheel is completely immobilized this tire is shredded the wheel is completely cracked um, like from a bunch of different angles. The only thing probably good on it is that center cap. Um, I think also the rotor is damaged and a few other things, even, possibly even, the, I don't know, we're gonna have to take everything apart. Thankfully, the headlight is looking pretty good. It doesn't look like it's moving at all. It doesn't seem like there's any cracks from the back here. So I'm super thankful because these headlights sent me back another $500. That's another $200 oil cooler. Um, the crash ball looks pretty good. This thing seems pretty cracked. So we'll have to replace that, but that's not a big deal. Pop in the hood. Right here, the crash bar looks really, really, really good. All of this honestly looks really, really, really good good so it looks like definitely what he said he hit like a curb or something um so definitely in the lower end of the car which is a huge 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 good thing but obviously if you went over something there's a possibility the subframe could be damaged and possibly the oil pan so that's what we're going to try to uh diagnose hopefully nothing is too big of a deal but honestly guys the gaskets all over here look pretty good like this thing looks very well taken care of i know it looks dirty but it looks very well maintained at the same time i'm also hoping nothing around here which is where the tower is i'm hoping nothing got bent around this area because the shock was pushed back like that hopefully none of those um, are damaged that'd be a really really good sign we'll compare and contrast both sides um there is a strut brace that goes around so that's a really good thing it should keep it in place but yeah without further ado let's go ahead and get this car get that wrecked wheel off get all the broken parts off this car so we can just start ordering things that we actually need <laughs> Guys, my boy Nick actually got me these for Christmas. He saw me using this Walmart jacks and he was like, he doesn't trust my life underneath them. That's so sweet of him. So shout out to him for sending me these jacks. Let's go ahead and start using them. Um, 
just to put it out there, I thought he got me two, but apparently each box came with two, so uh, we have four. If you guys don't know which Nick I'm talking about, I'm talking about the guy that helps me code all of my cars, so I call him Nick Coding just because he helps me with all my cars, and he's the guy that helps me code all my cars. So that's a very, very, very thoughtful gift, so shout out to you, my dude. I think I got these like a few weeks back, and I haven't got to really unbox them because I want to unbox them when we went to the new place. So shout out to you, my guy. I really appreciate them. Definitely going to be using these from here on out. What I actually like about these as well, these actually have a locking pin that you can put in there to make sure that this thing doesn't accidentally fail on you, which is super safe and I like it a lot. And these are actually three ton each. My old ones are only like one and a half tons or two tons. These are three tons each. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start putting up those jack stands so we can get this wheel off. All right, guys, so the things we got off was pretty much this thing. Honestly, no bolts were holding this on. And uh, yes, this is an M part, says somewhere on there, M. Yes, yeah, so that means that you have to pay the M tax on this. I remember my first E92 M3, guys, was hit from the front, the entire front end, the rear quarter panels, the door, and everything. I bought the car for $7,000, but it cost me $20,000 to put back together. This, honestly, this car to rebuild would cost you way more than to build an F80. For some reason, F80s and uh, M4s and stuff like that are way cheaper to rebuild than the E92. So for those of you guys who want an E92 M3, just know parts are super, super, super rare. And that uh, when they are for sale, the parts are more expensive than the newer cars. So if you guys like the F80s, honestly, pay that extra money up front to get the car, and then it'll be cheaper to rebuild than this car. Because I'm already taking all this stuff off, just the little things. I'm like, wow, that's going to add up a lot of money. I'm starting to see things in here as well. I think I'm going to have to end up taking this down to the frame shop. Um, it looks like the tire did push back on this well a little bit. because This can easily just be pulled out a little bit um, right here as well. I can see that. But yeah, guys, these are damages you think would never happen, but it did happen. So um, we're probably going to end up just trying to fix all this suspension, put the wheel on there, getting this towed down to the shop, and having them just pull out this part right here and just make sure that's all flush and perfect. And uh, if that needs to be welded, the welded back. And honestly, it looks like there's a, like a, the main um, frame behind it. This is just kind of like a skin. Um, so this probably really doesn't matter, especially once you put on the wheel guard. Um, but for me, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, just tell the body shop. I mean, I'm, it's probably going to cost me a couple hundred dollars anyway. It's nothing too crazy, and I want this to be perfect. So uh, we'll get that sorted. Um, the next thing is um, looking at this. We just have to remove that. Um, this water tank actually looks like it's holding fluids just fine. On the 335 IS, similar kind of hit. This was actually busted. This seems to be fine, but the actual tube that goes to it was cracked in half. So uh, new tube, uh, new wheel guard, new tire, and um, wheel right there. Looking at the suspension, the shock from right now looks really good. And I'm hoping it is good because this is a $400 to $500 shock. I really doubt it is. We'll take it out and inspect it to make sure there's any bends or anything. But so far, so good. So guys, we went ahead and removed everything over here in terms of suspension other than the EDC shock itself. The shock does not seem to be punctured. There's a few scratches here, but it's not a big deal. And if I go ahead and turn this around, looking at it like this, it doesn't look bent whatsoever. So I think honestly, in terms of the shock, it may actually be good. So I'm super happy our shock is good. So we're just gonna I'll go ahead and leave the shock right there, honestly. We'll go ahead and remove the shock if we need to when we install the new suspension. But as for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that in there because it is kind of a pain to get all that stuff off from the top. So we're gonna leave that in for now. Uh, but the shock so far looks really good, guys. And I'm super happy about that because again, this thing costs a lot of money. I think like $500 for this shock alone because this is the EDC shock and this is from the competition package. So super hard 
hard to find this. Um, this is the only part out of all the suspension that is competition package. See, I think we lucked out on that, but um, looking into here, again, we need to um, get this thing pulled out of frame shop. Not a big deal, shouldn't affect the driving whatsoever, but this is more of an aesthetic thing. Um, definitely want to take care of this since it is a clean title. We want this to be as perfect as possible. And looking down in here, now the subframe does have a little chip right there. Shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. Honestly, that can honestly just be left. That's not a big deal. I'm um, looking around, looking around, looking. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Okay. Well, there you guys go. Um, subframe does need to be replaced. Oh, man. <laughs> So this is gonna be a really big job and I think I'm gonna have to call my boy Arlon to help us take care of this But as you guys can see from the weld it completely separated now I could probably push this back up and get this re-welded um, But honestly guys again, this is a clean title it, it, You want to take care of like, when you get a clean title you want it to be as perfect as possible So nothing beats an OEM weld so probably get a new subframe um, It is what it is again some more hidden damage you guys can't see from the pictures But uh, in total I think if you took this down to a shop this will be probably parts of labor um yeah this is instant totaled honestly in my opinion because um this is about a fifteen thousand dollar repair um and then this honestly they won't even repair it they'll just instantly total it because of stuff like this this isn't a big deal uh but this isn't repairable like you'll have to de-skin the car um it's kind of like if you get a little rock chip on your quarter panel they're not going to repair that they're just going to total out your car just because that's part of the frame and anything that happens like this little dent right here doesn't affect anything but that can no longer be restored like original um so yeah that is what it is i think the stuff frame is a lot of uh it's labor intensive i think it's like a, a 12 hour job um that's how much a mechanic quotes on it um so that's that plus they're gonna get the subframe from bmw so yeah this makes sense why the previous owner did not want to go ahead and repair it himself uh for me honestly i'm thinking looking at all the parts and knowing it because i bought i've, I've, I've rebuilt an e92 m3 before um unlike this one this is a competition package so the wheel is a little more expensive just looking at the part so i'm assuming for me to do all this realistically to be a perfect job also i noticed on the the hood itself there is a paint chip right there i thought that was um something on the hood but no that looks like it's paint chipped um so all that getting repaired uh definitely gonna need a new steering wheel airbag definitely gonna be needing a new curtain airbag and definitely gonna be needing uh the bottom the battery terminal there um honestly it's probably gonna need a headliner as well this is a clean title so we don't want any tears and there's a small little tear right there as you can see on the headliner so Again, a lot of numbers to process in my head, but just to give a rough estimate, this for me, as somebody secondhand, about to do all the labor myself for the most part, um, it's probably gonna run me realistically five, five grand. Um, now, honestly, five grand is not that bad, but it, obviously, if you guys account my time, like a shop will not do five grand. A shop would go source brand new parts. This is about a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar repair if you take it to a shop. So yeah, for me, honestly, I'm happy with the damages. It's not too, too, too bad. The subframe is is, is a surprise. Um, that is super unfortunate. Um, but honestly, I think we can get this thing back on the road perfectly um, for around five k. I think five k is a good deal to get this thing back on the road. Again, that's fingers crossed. Assuming nothing else is wrong with the car. Now, the previous owner did tell me he had some issues with the air mass flow sensor, and I believe another code. Um, he replaced the two sensors, and the code still came back. Uh, so those are issues that need to be addressed once we get the car running. And then also, um, I believe he did tell me he did the actuators. The actuators were already replaced on this car. So that is a really good thing. So the only other thing that we need to take care of on this car to make sure that uh, no other issues come up would probably be rod bearings. I'll probably hit up SSR Performance, see if they want to collaborate on that, uh, get some rod bearings done on this car, because I think that'd be super, super, super cool. But yeah, guys, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get a full parts list of everything we need um, for this front suspension area. Um, the, obviously, the two airbags. And then now on the trunk, guys, we have so many things over here and I'm just super curious to what we have in the trunk. Maybe we, maybe see, we have some extra goodies, who knows? So honestly, I kind of want to do kind of like a mystery unboxing and see what exactly is in here. Um, I honestly don't know. The only thing I do know um, is that it actually came uh, with this carbon fiber trim. I mean, not carbon fiber, but the original steering wheel trim. These trims on eBay about $150. It looks like the original owner bought the OEM one, um, which is pretty awesome. He actually replaced it, so it's currently in the car without any of the peel. This one does have a lot of the peel on on there uh, but these things still are very desirable and I believe they still go for like $70 in this condition I know a couple of my friends actually want this so uh, I might actually just end up giving it to one of them because uh, yeah this is a really sick trim piece and this only comes on the M cars not the M Sport you have to get an M3 to have this trim so uh, yeah even this old one that people uh, throw away honestly has value in it, which is kind of crazy looking in here uh, this looks like to be the front wheel guard uh, that's garbage 
um, the carbon fiber um, front lip, so garbage. Uh, I believe this is kind of like the foam piece for the front bumper, garbage. And this actually looks to be the original spoiler um, on this car. Well, it is a little bit, uh, you know, beat up. And honestly, I don't think I'm ever gonna put this on, so. Oh wait, no, actually I'm probably not gonna junk this. If any of you guys are local and want an E92 spoiler, this is a jet black. It's not that badly scuffed up. Honestly, this can get polished out, look really good. So um, for those of you guys who have an E92, this is the same chunk as a regular E92. So um, if you guys want a little spoiler, hit me up on uh, Instagram. You guys can just have this piece because um, it's better than just throwing it out, you know? Looking in here some more, we do have these two pieces. And honestly, these look to be just fine. So uh, I think this is for the front bumper um, to the, the fender liner. So we're definitely gonna be keeping these. Um, these do look like they may be made out of carbon fiber. So uh, that looks like money. And uh, thankfully we have that in the trunk. Another thing that we just found here, um, this looks like it snapped off the car. Uh, okay, I don't really know where this came off of exactly, but looks like we're gonna need it. So uh, uh, this one, I'll probably just keep it for reference. Oh buddy, a lot more garbage and a lot more money. This stuff, honestly guys, Cost a lot of money. Now I would throw this out, but it has a lot of hardware on there. It actually has a part number on there, so we can go ahead and get this thing ordered. And this is exactly what I mean, guys, by things you guys never put into account. Those little things that have part numbers on them, especially these little things. If you want to restore a car to the T, um, getting all these parts, people don't actually sell them used. They just usually throw that stuff out. So you would have to go to BMW to get that. And that part alone probably cost me about $150 alone, that little underbelly pan part. These are probably sitting back $50 or $60 a piece. So thankfully these are in good shape. I think, um, yeah, so we're keeping these for sure. <laughs> oh, this is actually kind of neat. So the previous owner, um, I did get paperwork that he did some of his uh, diagnostics at Precision Dynamics. And then he actually got his uh, alternator, I mean not his alternator, his, um, uh, what's it called? Actuators, I forgot what is it called, I said it earlier, the two throttle bodies, I think this all, I don't know. The two, no, it's not the throttle body, I think it's actuators, I'm having a serious brain fart right now. Uh, but he got those done, those two major components on his own. He got that done at SSR Performance. Uh, so it looks like he kept the original plates to both of these places. Honestly, this is kind of cool, so I might actually keep these, they're pretty dope. All right, we got the rest of the carbon fiber lip right here. We have some more little pieces there. This is just a box full of uh, nothing else that looks important to be honest. Oh, well this is a uh, little documentation right here. Um, shows that he bought the steering wheel cover, the previous owner bought the steering wheel cover for $135, uh, which is about right. He bought uh, BMW valve stem caps, which is the one that goes on all the wheels. I actually saw that. Um, that's $18 um, for the set. That's actually not that bad. Um, he bought a an air, like in the, uh, what's it called? The air filter um, for $27. Uh, hood shocks, he bought two of them, OEM for $63. And then he also bought the pearl, the, the Jerez Black Pearl Front Bumper Reflector, um, $75. So that actually noticed that that's two um, Jerez Black, the original black uh, reflectors on there, which is really nice. It's like the, the, the original painted ones instead of those ugly yellow ones. Um, I didn't know actually a company actually sells those in exact paint match. So that's pretty cool. He paid $75 for that. So this is definitely um, something that exactly what I meant. Like keep stuff like this because it is important. It looks like we do have the toe cap in the trunk in the exact same color as well. So that is a huge bonus. Sheesh, guys, there's a couple things in here. Hold up. Now in this little box, this was the painted front bumper reflectors. Um, yeah, that doesn't look like bumper reflectors. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Oh, that was an actual BMW part. That's kind of crazy. So, um, the previous owner left the original, um, the original, like, the, the caps that were on the wheels, and this was an actual OEM part. Um, uh, I'll show you guys this in a minute. But the valve stems that he actually got, I didn't know that BMW actually sells valve stem packs. This is $18 from BMW. That's a pretty good deal, I'm not gonna lie. Definitely gonna be keeping that in the trunk. I think that's kind of cool to have, honestly. Now, the next thing in this bag, um, gas cap. So this looks to be a brand new OEM gas cap, which is pretty dope. Um, I don't know if the either, if you already replaced it or no, this is the brand new gas cap. So that was the other issue that was with the car. He did tell me that the car had some kind of issue with the, uh, with like the purge valve and saying gas cap is loose or whatever. It's throwing a code for that. So obviously it throws a check engine light, um, but he replaced the gas cap and that didn't fix the issue. So it could honestly mean something wrong with either the fuel tank, a purge release valve, or some kind of like a clog like we had the first ever 335 that we built. So uh, we'll get into that. But yeah, we have an extra gas cap, which uh, never really hurts. I'm assuming it's honestly good. 40,000 miles on the clock. 
Uh, I can't imagine that being bad. There's another sensor right here. Um, let's see what this sensor is. So genuine gas cap was $20, um, cabin filler um, free, whatever, cabin filler, whatever. $55 intake air temperature sensor. So uh, this was a sensor you replaced. This was $85 for an OEM part. Again, everything that was on this car was done OEM and I really respect the previous owner for really taking good care of this car. It's really unfortunate they had to get into this accident because honestly, this is like the tip, this is the ideal um, like owner for the car. The previous owner took really good care of his car and you know, I gotta salute him for that. I have major respect for someone that uh, goes OEM parts and does everything by the books. So yeah, I mean, at least we have the original sensors, the original caps, so when we do diagnostics, we can kind of uh, go through these and make sure everything was uh, done properly. There's another thing over here from BMW again. Uh, this is a iPod connector. Huh, never seen this in my life, but. Another thing I'm noticing just now is the OEM battery. There's a good chance that battery's probably gone bad. So uh, yeah, probably gonna need a new battery, of course, and then also that battery terminal, that one that got discharged. We're gonna have to replace that to get the car started. Hopefully in the next video, guys, we'll have that battery cable and get this thing started because that is something I've just been oh, dying to hear. And guys, we are in my office room right now. Honestly, guys, I decided to do a little printout, which I'll pop up right over here. And uh, that printout's gonna pretty much show you guys the breakdown of parts that I assume what it's gonna cost because again, I've done this build before. I have a general estimate of how much things are gonna cost. Uh, but honestly, considering inflation as well, um, some of these numbers could be off a little bit, but I did a little bit of research too. So I think this is pretty spot on, but this is not including all the little things that I'm sure is gonna pop up. But this is all the major stuff. And uh, just to give you guys just a general price, the total definitely is gonna be about $6,850. That's gonna be like for sure, for sure. Um, so the full breakdown, you guys saw the front bumper is 600, passenger fender 550, spindle knuckle 150. Um, I get, I have the whole list of everything. I don't wanna go through this entire list. I think that's unnecessary because I have a picture right there. But this is gonna be much the full breakdown. If we do end up getting things on a budget, I'll go ahead and put the price right next to it. Um, so I'll show you guys the total build of this in the end. Uh, but if you end up paying more, again, I'll put the realistic cost on this side so you guys will know how much I actually paid for it. But yeah, guys, that being said, if you guys want to support the channel make sure you check out that merch down below every purchase is going to be helping support this e92 m3 so if you guys want to support the channel make sure you check out those merch down below but without further ado guys i love y'all so much remember to stay humble i see y'all in the next one peace out man you guys are kind of far away um yeah uh next video should be uh some f80 content competition seats i think it'd be pretty sick